Hello, this is the first of two videos on what are called definitive screening designs. So previously we have talked about many types of screening designs and we've talked about D-optimal designs, I-optimal screening designs, and alias-optimal designs. And it turns out that the people who invented the alias optimal designs we discussed in the screening designs two notes, that is Jones and Noxheim, um, also created something called definitive screening designs. This is a new class of design and they're interesting because they're relatively small as you'll see yet they have some properties that allow them to be used for optimization in cases often um, done using much larger what are called response surface designs that we'll talk about later. So the definitive screening designs and they've been around since uh, 2011 and they're interesting because they're similar in size to Plackett-Berman designs <clears throat> but unlike Plackett-Berman designs, there's no partial aliasing of the main effects with other effects such as quadratic effects or two-way interactions. Recall in Plackett-Berman's, each main effect is partially aliased with every two-way interaction not involving that effect. So these designs offer a number of clear advantages in terms of discerning what might be the important effects. So basically uh, the advantages of definitive screening designs are as follows. Each of the K factors is run at three levels. So most screening designs are run at two levels and again we can create optimal designs in the custom design platform with more levels but typically continuous factors are run at three levels. It does not mention it here but you can have categorical factors but they can have no more than two levels. Okay. If the uh, minimum number of runs, um, if K is even the number of factors, the number of runs is two to times K plus one. Actually let me correct the notes while we're doing this. Okay. So you can see the notes. Okay. So just so there is no confusion. So 2 to the times k plus 1 and if k is even we add a couple of runs. If k is odd add a couple of runs uh, and this is actually done automatically in jump and we add the additional runs to make sure the main effects are orthogonal. Point number three is really critical. The main effects not only are orthogonal, they're free of any partial aliasing with two-factor interactions or quadratic effects. So because of this, it is possible to estimate the main effects and not be concerned with any potential aliases. All main effects and quadratic effects can be estimated in one experiment. Furthermore, no two-factor interaction is completely aliased with another two-factor interaction or quadratic effect. So we have the potential of estimating some number of interactions and quadratic effects if effect sparsity is holding. Okay. And generally effect sparsity will hold so these designs give us the potential of estimating all important effects in one efficient experiment. And a few things about these designs. <clears throat> the amount of partial aliasing between quadratic effects is relatively small. Quadratic effects are two-way interact, uh, not two ways, but polynomial terms. And in these designs we can estimate all quadratic effects. So there's a small amount of aliasing among them but as you'll see on slide 5 it's actually pretty small. However 
there is potential aliasing between two-way interactions and quadratic effects and this aliasing tends to decrease as the number of factors increase. So below just to illustrate is the potential if you look at this very closely you'll see some potential aliasing between two-way interactions and quadratic effects. But again, potentially if effect sparsity is holding, we can actually still discern what might be the important effects. Okay. And the last slide, just to show you, this is slide seven. This is an alias matrix for a four-factor definitive screening design. It would have nine runs in it. And the bottom line is you can see there's a great deal of uh, partial aliasing, very strong partial aliasing. So the bottom line is when we use definitive screening designs, even if K were less than six, the number of factors, we would still generate a design with at least K equals six and then delete the two terms that do not seem to be, or columns that do not seem to be necessary. Okay. But in general, uh, don't use uh, a design in terms of its size less than k equals 6. Okay. And finally, this last set of slides just illustrates the issue of partial aliasing, and this is a pretty simple example. This is the, at the top you see the true model. This is a simulation. But notice something. When we take a look and estimate a main effects only model, we get the correct estimates. There is no partial aliasing. This is one of the real strengths of these definitive screening designs. Okay. Now I add the <coughs> um, quadratic effects to the model. So notice we have a squared and b squared. So we look at a squared and the a squared um, coefficient is correct. That's because a squared, the um, quadratic term, is not aliased with any two-way interactions involving a. On the other hand, we look at B, B is aliased because B um, is, is, and because it is actually aliased with the two interactions AC and AD. And in fact, uh, C squared and D squared should be zero, but again, they're partially aliased. And you can see, for instance, C squared is really four for AD and d squared is 2 for ac. So this is why it's important to worry about partial aliasing in terms of uh, analyzing any def screening design, including definitive screening designs. But we're going to study models that make this relatively easy to do. And then on the last slide I show, as we start to add the correct terms to the model, so if you take a look on slide 11, this is the correct model. And because the partial aliases are all in the model, the coefficients are all correct. Okay. So keep in mind that these uh, definitive screening designs have important properties. Main effects are orthogonal. Main effects are free of any partial aliasing with quadratics or two-way interactions. And keep in mind that quadratic um, terms and two-way interactions are partially aliased. And assuming that effect sparsity holds, it is possible we could fully characterize a process with one definitive screening design. Okay. And something to keep in mind, we're going to talk about analysis of these designs. And that is. In the use of these designs, screening designs, historically, people have used them for what I call explaining. They're interested in trying to find out if they can discern some effects that might be um, important. 
they're not really that interested in the model predicting. Well, it turns out this is an important issue that has only recently been recognized in design of experiments. In point of fact, models that are chosen, say, from a screening design such that they appear to contain uh, explanatory effects, that is, that's how they've been picked. Like I picked all the main effects because they looked important, but I didn't worry about other terms. These models tend to predict very poorly. So in analyzing screening designs, as we've actually already illustrated, I'm going to emphasize again, our focus is on prediction. Most engineers and scientists who run experiments are interested in prediction. You know, as an example, when people want to optimize a process or characterize it, that is entirely an example of prediction. So analyzing uh, a design in terms of explanation is likely to yield a model that will not uh, do a good job of characterizing or optimizing a process. Okay. So our goal in, in our analysis, as it has mostly been with screening designs, is on prediction. But you should be aware that it is possible if all you wanted to do for some reason is decide what effects might be most important, then you could do explanatory modeling. But I want to emphasize my focus and my in my experience, prediction is really what engineers in particular, but usually scientists are after. Okay. And at this point, we're going to do another video and we're going to talk about analyzing definitive screening designs.